Hi, this is John LaPola. And I'm Douglas Amport. And this is See What You Can Brew. Brought to you by Bitter Nesters in Brooklyn, New York. So uh, you might not know who we are. But if you're listening to this, you know that we've started a podcast. We have started a podcast, <laughs> and this is episode number one. Uh, so what we are is uh, New York City's only homebrew supply shop. And brew on premises. And we're also classroom space. And, and we do we lots do of events. We do a lot of other stuff. So yeah. Uh, you can go to bitterandesters.com if you want to find out all that stuff or uh, check out seewhatyoucanbrew.com. But if you're listening to this first episode, you probably already know who we are because only our moms are listening to it right. right now. Right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I think we want to start talking about why, uh, why have we decided to do a podcast. I mean, who the heck are we that we bought all this equipment and are trying to talk about beer and home brewing? So, John. Well, honestly, I, I think the reason why we wanted to start this podcast is because for the past eight years, we've been wanting to start a podcast, <laughs> and we've never really had a, a great idea of what the content would be, and then we've decided, you know, why don't we do it as being like just part of the store, the community that surrounds the store, uh, which means that there's so many things that happen in New York City as far as beer and as far as homebrew. We have all these events that happen. We do things here at Bitter Nesters all the time, so it's just kind of like a, a way of reaching out to the community and having the community come back to us uh so if you have any ideas and you want to be interviewed or something we're going to grab you and we're yeah pretty much i mean we we the reason i want to do a podcast is because i want to talk to all the people in the beer scene i want i want to selfishly just have the opportunity to go out there uh preferably to get fed free beer and (laughs) and and talk to the people because they're doing really great stuff and i think you know, I was thinking about this this morning. New York is sort of an underrepresented beer scene nationally. I don't think people know that it exists and is as vibrant as They're it is. They're beginning to learn They're that. beginning to learn. Yeah. But, like, you know San Diego. You know Portland, Oregon. You know Denver, Colorado. Even Asheville, North Carolina. You know, all of these places are fantastic. They've got this vibrant beer scene. People travel to go to them to drink beer. New York's got a lot of great shit. And we have great breweries. We have amazing home brewers. We have a very strong home brewing community here. Um, there's uh, eight different clubs, mm-hmm. I believe, mm-hmm. in the five boroughs. And uh, we're here to, uh, you know, be the kind of the nucleus for all that. And so since we are sort of a, a homebrew nucleus, I can't think of a better word, the podcast just makes sense that we can, we can actually talk to you all and uh, kind of bring us even closer to yeah. us, bring you closer to us. Also, I think uh, blatant self-promotion. Blatant self-promotion, Blatant yes. self-promotion, uh, bitterinesters.com is, uh, I mean, that's that's what we want to do, is we want to talk about us, we want to talk about our community, we want to talk about the great stuff that home brewers and brewers here in the city are doing. Um, also, I think, I think one of the good opportunities we have with the podcast is to answer a lot of the questions we get. Yep. Um, again and again and again and put it down in one place you know i've wanted to put something on the website or like the brewery's wiki for a long time but i think this way we can put our voices down on certain you know questions and opinions that need to be said like if my airlock stops bubbling is my beer done stay tuned <laughs> very uh, exciting i now, can't wait the other thing about this podcast is that we really don't know what the hell we're doing. We have a pretty good idea, but uh, since this is number one, and like everything that Douglas and I have done as a team throughout the years, uh, we start with one idea and it kind of morphs into another idea. We start with one idea and no experience. And that's, how, that's just how we started in the first place. <laughs> and we learn, you know, we've learned uh, and we learn from the people that uh, come into the store and and so we will learn from this podcast. Well, yeah, and if, if, you know, if you're listening to this and you have a thought or an idea, please either reach out to us via email, Douglas or John at bitterandesters.com is the email address, and, you know, seewhatyoucanbrew.com. Uh, there, I think there's comments hey. down there. I'm still building the website, so I don't really know. It's not Douglas or John at bitterandesters.com. No, it's not Douglas or John. <laughs> it's Douglas that, at bitterandesters.com or, or John at bitterandesters.com. Okay. But we should have a Douglas or John at bitterandesters.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you really don't care who you're talking to. But, yeah. um, so, John, who are you and why? Why? I mean, we kind of we talked here? about why we're here, but like, who are you? What, what gives you any authority to talk about this sort of thing? I've been brewing beer since 1992, so that uh, I, I started before anybody had ingredients that tasted like anything. So that, I've been riding this wave and uh, climbing this mountain uh, for since 92. But I, I'm a multifaceted person. I, uh, as you know, Douglas, I am a musician. And uh, I always kind of identified with music as who I was. I worked for years and years as a printing press operator, which is incredibly uh, not that interesting. But that is something I did for 23 years, so it's not something I can ever forget. 
Um, it's incredibly dull and dangerous. And dangerous and smelly. I have a, a wonderful girlfriend for the past 24 years, and hopefully uh, that's going to keep going on. Her name's Carla. What else is there about me? Well, I, don't know. I was thinking, I was, I was thinking a little bit about um, some of the things you teach about in some of these classes. I mean, you... You've been brewing since 1992, but you've only really started teaching in the last eight years. I mean, That's true. I guess, what sort of things do you enjoy teaching other people? What about beer inspires you to, to do this podcast? So um, we decided uh, early on when we were putting Bitter Nesters together that I would be the one who was in charge of the uh, education program. The best way to learn something is to teach it, and it's forced me to actually constantly constantly learn things so that's been really uh, exciting and I really enjoy beer and so what do I like to teach I like to teach the things that you don't realize really will affect your beer the different yeasts that you can use in, in our yeast class we do tasting with uh, one wort and uh, eight different yeasts uh, things like that is what uh, can be really quite exciting yeah I think that's one of the most educational classes we have Th- like I, every is. time every time we do a different yeast pairing a yeast set I find it I just just fascinating. It's great. It's really informative and really informs my choices when I'm brewing beer. Well, those like the yeast tasting and the hops tasting mm-hmm. uh, for those, both those class, I do them for myself. Like when, we, when we're when we putting together what hops are we going to do single hops with and what yeast are we going to do single yeast with, I think, well, what do I need to learn? Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it that I don't know? And, and obviously, I can then uh, pass that information to customers and right. to the, the students. Um, I really like the fact that we have such a strong brew shop 101 class that class was the th- was the class we started with it was the first class i ever wrote that was also the class we taught in the new york city resistor space yep, i mean before we, we even had a place taught that in random farms yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've t- taken it on the road but we've taught it a thousand times and it's still fresh and new and interesting yeah. pretty much every single time people still take it take a lot out of it and we get people the interesting thing i found about that class is even what eight years in nine years in we are still getting People who have never heard of us find out about that class, not interested in beer at all, and they come in and they take that class and they walk away with Even if they don't brew beer afterwards, they walk away with a greater knowledge. We've even had people who already brew take mm-hmm. the class and learn more. And uh, that was you, Doug. When, when we first were putting the class together, I actually wanted it to be a little less information heavy, and you said no. no this is, we want everything that, that they can possibly need to know for uh, brewing beer. We're going to make sure that we're going to put that... I'm a nerd. What can I say? Yeah, Yeah. and it works. You know, Mm -hmm. the fact that we do make a beer during the class really saves it a little bit from the information. Uh, We like to tell people, you know, if you can if you can boil stuff and add hops to it and then ferment it, you can make beer. So, you know, cool. Um, so what about you, Doug? Who are you? Who am I? How did I meet you? How did how do we meet? We met. Was it doing a punk rock opera or something? No, that was that was later. That was much much later. later. Um, so who am I? I I have absolutely no authority or qualifications that allow me to be here. Um, except that I've been brewing beer for eight years, nine years now, and making wine before that. Um, and that I love it, love it to death. I think it's fantastic. I, I like brewing beer, but I my my job is mostly to keep the lights on here. That's what Doug does. Mostly keep the lights on. Talk to people. Doug, uh, Doug uh, makes sure that the bills are paid and, the, uh, and everything just keeps running. And uh, he sets it up. At a lot of times, uh, there'll be something that Doug will have a great idea about, and he'll set up the idea, and then I always say I knock it down. So you might see me more, but there's no question that it's me and Doug just Doing chipping this away thing. at this yep. every day and making sure that, uh, that you guys get everything that you want and need from us. I think my greatest... My greatest benefit, my greatest asset is probably that I don't care about problems. You don't. <laughs> and, and I worry about them incessantly. Yes, cool. that's, that's the yin and yang of John and Doug. Uh, B&E, Bitter and Esters. Uh, why do we start Bitter and Esters, John? Why did you start this business? Well, you're the one who came to me and well, said, I know. let's uh, start a brew pub, actually. And this was in 2010. It was actually at uh, Atlantic Annick. And he said, let's this start big, a, this a brew pub. This big street festival done on Atlantic Avenue. And I said, sure. I was running a printing press. I wanted to get out of it. And you said, let's let's do this. And it turned out, and rightly so, the laws were very different in New York. There were reasons why there weren't brew pubs. We thought, oh, we'll open a brew pub because there aren't any, And but there were definite reasons. There are definite reasons. There were no brew pubs in New York, or very few. Very, yeah. f- very few. And the laws have since changed, and we're seeing this great uh, resurgence of beer in, in New York. But back then, we weren't nobody was ready i mean we weren't ready to i mean this was it. this was before uh single cut 
before Finback, before I mean I think it was Brooklyn Brewery at the time and Chelsea. Six Point. Chelsea was the only Chelsea in one the city. I knew of in the city, yeah. yeah. And then I think Kelso, Kelso and Heartland. And Heartland, yeah. yeah. That's all I can think of before Bronx, like before anybody. Yeah, it was anybody. before Bronx. I think it was before every, everybody. Yeah. I mean, Bronx had been around a while, but um, I don't know. Yeah, no, Bronx, I think Brewery, Bronx Brewery opened, started after. Started God, after, my, after we've we, seen it all. We really have. It's pretty amazing. It's scary. Yeah, so we were going to open a brewery or a brew pub, and we looked at it, and we were like, oh, I don't think we have that kind of money. Um, <laughs> and then we thought about, oh, okay, maybe we should open like a, a community brewery or something like right, that. Right, we, we, had, yep, that we idea. had that idea. Yep. And then we ran the numbers on that, and that didn't work either. <laughs> and then Always we thought, run the numbers, kids. <laughs> Always look at the numbers. And so, and then, and then I think we, we came down to it. We're like, well, we want the community. We want the education. Um, a homebrew shop. That's that's where we need to be. And there was there was only one in the city at the time. There was only one, um, and it was a good homebrew shop. It's a great homebrew shop. Yeah, Brooklyn Brooklyn Homebrew. Uh, and sadly, they're no longer with us. Uh, you know, they've moved on to other projects. They're both alive and happy, as far as I as far as I know. I, I said the way I said that that was terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're fine. Uh, they're both I know fine. They're, fine. they're great. Uh, but they they moved on to different projects um, several years ago. But uh, you know, there was there was only them, and we started uh, in a different neighborhood, and we just we just focus on building this community. It's been really great with a different business model, also. The, the idea right away was to be a brew on premises as well. Um, right. It's because my brother Mark had told me about. He went to a brew on premises in California. I said, "What a great idea!" He told me that like ten years before we opened. And then when Doug and I were deciding on doing the uh, shop, I said, "Why don't we, you know, try a brew on premises model?" And it's ended up being a good a good thing, you know. Every year, uh, more and more people are brewing on premises at this store, so that that's very cool. It's been cool. No, it's been great, and it's been educational for us too. I mean, it's you get to teach every beer that we that right. we make, and you you get become a very good brewer very quickly. Those beers better come out good, and they better come <laughs> out good because thing. people are really excited for them and they've paid money for yes. them. So yeah. And then uh, we also had the idea for education space right away. Uh, and we started teaching, as Doug said before, at Resistor, which is a hacker space over in Borum Hill. They were very nice. We were friends with them, and they liked the DIY aesthetic. And we wanted to do proof of concept. And so we started teaching the exact same class, pretty much, that we do as far as Brew Shop 101. And we sold them out all the time. And then we, that was the proof. We were like, okay, this is going to We did that for work. almost a year. Yeah, it was almost a year. Brick and mortar. I was still and printing then, this whole time, by the way. And I was still doing project management. Um, and then we opened the brick and mortar, and the rest is history. So, yep. I mean, so John, uh, so enough about us. Where have, uh, where have you been? What have you been up to lately? Well, let's see. I've been in, in Rhode Island at Homebrew Con 2019, which was great. That was fantastic. Uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Lots and lots of beer. A lot of, a lot of uh, really cool stuff happened. I gave a talk on water. A very exciting talk on water. Uh, not as dull as you think it would be. As, and that went over well. So I was. I'm I was sorry, John. I'm, I'm going to toot your horn just a little bit here. John gave this water talk to a like standing room only space. It was full. It was packed to the gills. Very much so. People were coming up afterwards asking. It was a great talk. In my opinion, it was one of the better talks I've seen there. Uh, wow. Uh, Thank this you, year. Doug. And there was there were a lot of good talks. You were right up there with John Palmer. I think. I think it was really great. Wow. Me yeah. And, me and Johnny P. Thank yeah. you. But I think the biggest news, though your talk was awesome, I think the biggest news uh, for us at least was uh, an award yep. uh, ceremony. Yeah, we were chosen as Homebrew Shop of the Year. Yeah, Homebrew Shop the, of the Year 2019. Uh, we, only the second time that they've given a Homebrew Shop of the Year award out, and it was based on people nominating us. And uh, we got 21 nominations. From wow, our, I didn't uh, realize that. Yeah, many. They, they sent me the information. <laughs> oh, cool. And what people had to do was basically say why they thought we should be Home Brew Shop of the Year. And apparently we came in out of 120. There were four finalists. Shops, finalists yep. And they said that we were just nailed it. And uh, it was really exciting. You I mean, know, it was, I, it was, it was, so it was really exciting. It was really exciting. One of the one of the greatest things about it was just the, in the nominations, the the folks who sent in nominations our customers said just the nicest things the nicest they things. say it was it was it made me cry a little bit me it too. was so wonderful and I, I mean it it also made me really appreciate you know what we do here and the folks who come in here like I, I mean I've got friends now that used to be just yep. customers oh, years ago and good friends good friends and I, I love I love our customers and I'm so happy and hearing hearing that stuff really made me Maybe my heart explode a little bit. Well, you know what? I, I was thinking about this. Like, well, we won Homebrew Shop of the Year, but did we really? Like, we, we worked hard on making this Homebrew Shop, but if all of our customers were assholes <laughs> and we were like this 
great homebrew shop with terrible customers, we would not win homebrew shop no, of the year. So I, it's really it's really great homebrew shop great customers, customers, customers of the, of the year, year award. Yeah. And also, we're the only homebrew shop in New York City. Out of the whole country, we win, and to me, it means New York City homebrewing won. Mm-hmm. Like we made sure that they, they meaning the people at the American Homebrew Association, saw with a spotlight what's going on in New York City, and and that that's what makes me really happy. I mean, I'm I'm happy to have won the the yeah. award, but I'm more happy for the the fact that this community involvement, and that's why we won. It wasn't because they said, oh, they they ignore us, but they're great. It's they said. <laughs> There's a great community. That was why we won. So thank you, everybody, for that. It was was really a lot of fun. A couple other things that went on HomebrewCon this year. Club night was awesome. Club night's always awesome. This was particularly awesome. Yeah, this one was pretty. I love. So the Bruminaries showed up in force, uh, and they had this fantastic pizza parlor. I don't know. What do you want to call it, John? uh, It was a a booth. They call it a booth, but it was set up like a pizza parlor. (laughs) They all wore fake mustaches and spoke with fake Italian accents and... It was, it was. It was really, and the beers wonderful. were fantastic. The beers, they had one of the best booths there. Uh, yeah. The Bruminaries, by the way, are one of the uh, homebrew clubs in New York City, and they actually started out of our store. Mm-hmm. So I think homebrew. I think New that. York City had a pretty, um, in New York City, New York State, the the whole New York region had a really strong showing. I mean, I Absolutely. saw, I saw New York City Homebrewers Guild there. I saw um, a Long Island. What was it Long Island? Long Island beer, beer and malt. Malt enthusiasts, Libme, who Libme. we work uh, closely with, uh, with a lot of events. Yep, and then the the grenade, grenade brigade, brigade up there. They all they all had good showings and good beers. Uh, there was a French, was it a French toast English mild? That was a uh, New York City Homebrewers Guild. Yeah. Guild. Yeah, it was I, I great. forget I forget who exactly uh, brewed that. If it was I can, stupid great. It was stupid great. If I can find that out, I'll put that in the show notes. Uh, that was really a great beer. I would uh, not eat breakfast anymore if I could have that every morning. <laughs> Uh, Jersey City uh, Brew Club was also there. Yeah. I mean, a couple of Syracuse upstate. They, there were a lot of a lot of good New York clubs there. I had a blast. Um, even the, the the professional night was pretty good too. I mean, there was a line for Trillium around the block. You couldn't even get near you couldn't, it. Yeah. I, I didn't even try. <laughs> I mean, either I tried all the other breweries. There's some great breweries out of Yeah, there were a lot of great uh, breweries. A lot of Northeast IPAs. Yeah, a lot of Northeast IPAs. A lot IPAs, of yeah. IPAs, 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 yeah. yeah. What else went on at HomebrewCon? Now, time? if you've never been to HomebrewCon, uh, they do it every year in a different city. The next uh, city is going to be uh, Nashville, I believe. Right. And it's just such a blast because it is a, a trade show floor. It's, it, there's, there are, are all new things from different homebrew uh, wholesalers and retailers and every booth. Now, you're just walking around looking at what they have to for the sale. Every booth has at least four or five taps that they're pouring beer, and it's like, wow. Then in the middle of the trade floor, they have something called Social Club, and that's usually a couple of the uh, homebrew clubs with beer pouring, like eight taps each. So you have like 24 taps there. And then every session where, where they have uh, actual educational sessions, there was about 70 of them all on homebrewing, uh, some on retail uh, for people like us, but mostly on homebrewing techniques. They had beer also, <laughs> so it was it was fantastic. <laughs> if you yeah. like beer and you like home brewing, I, it's really worth going. It's a lot of fun. Um, we saw some uh, some good talks. Oh, uh, a lot of good talks actually. Uh, yeah, uh, John Palmer presented a really interesting uh, John Palmer with Fermentus. Was with it Fermentus? Yeah, yeah. They, I, he went first. Oh yeah, he so so it was it was a two part talk, and John Palmer talked a lot about fermentation. And this, I see, I think the next talk at, from at the Fermentus, uh, what was it? The next talk at the Fermentus event uh, was probably one of the most informative for me, and it kind of blew my mind a little bit. There was a fantastic lady there by the name of oh, let me, it's right here, uh, Gabriella, and I'm going to probably butcher this, Gabriella. Montandon? Montandon? She's French, so it she's could French. Be so I, I, I'm awesome. so sorry about that. But uh, she's a technical manager uh, for sensory analysis at Fermentis. She had a really great presentation. Um, they had done a lot of research on pitching. Was it not pitching rates, but the the style of either rehydrating your yeast, your dry yeast, before you pitch it, um, and the temperature of rehydration, and the amount of stirring or Correct. agitation during rehydration. A lot of graphs. A lot of graphs. Uh, whether or not you needed to rehydrate it beforehand or if you could pitch it directly into the wort or rehydrating it in wort before pitching it into the beer. And basically it all boiled down to just take dry yeast and put it directly in the beer. Yeah, and not agitate it. And don't agitate it. And you don't need to uh, oxygenate beforehand. And they, they found that the attenuation, the viability, and the vitality were exactly the same. If not, if not worse, if, when if you started if rehydrating, worse, when you agitated, especially, especially agitated. Yeah, that was yeah. where you, you lost a lot of cells. Uh, I was talking to Jose Pizarro, who's uh, Jose Pizarro Gosset, Gosset, 
uh, who's a sales manager on the East Coast for Fermentis. And he's going to be coming to the store. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So uh, they gave two talks. One was on 3470. Uh, and this other one was on uh, actually whether or not you should rehydrate yeast. I and actually asked. I'm, I, I emailed to try and get that presentation. So hopefully we can post that as oh, that'd well. Be great. Yeah, that'd be really yeah. good. Hopefully we can do that in the links down there. Yeah. Um, what else I, do we do? I mean, well, that's about it, right? No. Oh, no. That's just it. <laughs> so, oh, gosh. No, it, just, it kept going on. It was great. Uh, we also, uh, because we have a podcast, I was able to set up some interviews uh, with a couple of the authors that were there. Was it, I, we felt it was a good time uh, to get everybody together. And we, we knew uh, everybody, and they were all very helpful. Uh, the first interview uh, was with Drew Beecham. <laughs> if you can call it that. And he pull, pulled out his podcast set up and immediately interviewed us. So, <laughs> it, you know, he's been doing it a lot longer than us. So we all of a sudden found ourselves being interviewed. So we'll, we'll probably, no, not probably, definitely. Well, he's going he's gonna to send, send us the, the files. files when he gets a chance, and we'll, we'll definitely put something up. I mean, it'll probably just be more of us patting ourselves on the back but if there's, <laughs> if there's uh, so much interesting footage, he's, he's interesting a super content. cool guy. Yeah. He has a new book cool. with uh, Denny Kahn. Simple Sorry. Brewing. Simple Brewing. Yeah. And then uh, right after that, we met with our friend Michael, Michael Tonsmeyer, Tonsmeyer, who is, uh, you might know him as the mad fermentationist. And he wasn't mad. He was actually quite happy. Brought us some beer, uh, which uh, we were thrilled about. <laughs> Not that we weren't drinking already. He talked mainly about his new brewery called Sapwood, Sapwood Cellars. Cellars. Uh, it's in Maryland. We have a, a, a good uh, interview with him that we will post either the next, next couple weeks podcast. Here, yeah. or podcast Probably after two that. weeks, yeah. yeah. He was, uh, we really had a good talk with him. And then I got to sit oh, down. Oh, and he, and he brought some fantastic beer. He brought that some was, great beer, That was yeah. great. I was fortunate enough to sit down with Stan Hieronymus and uh, talk to him. Uh, you might know Stan from the book For the Love of Hops or his blog Appalachian Beer. Uh, Stan was actually at the store one time when he was promoting his book uh, brewing local. So I, I talked to Stan about hop creep and how you can take care of it, but we will release that fairly soon. Hop creep, that kind of sounds like something coming up behind you. Like, oh, <laughs> watch out for the hop creep in the dark of the That's night. What I keep, thinking. Yeah, I keep thinking that the hops creep out of the beer or something. <laughs> They're coming to get you, John. <laughs> the um, hop creeps, you know, <laughs> they're around. <laughs> All those dirty hop creeps. All those dirty uh, hop creeps. Sitting on the corner trying to... Smelling all on. nice. Yuck. All right. Uh, what else? What else do I don't we do? know. We've been account? babbling. We've been babbling on and on. Oh, uh, the one other thing. One other thing that was really fantastic was actually after HomebrewCon, on our way home, we stopped at Buttonwood Brewery Buttonwood. in Rhode Island. Buttonwood Brewery, uh, run by, uh, owned by Morgan Snyder. Morgan Snyder, one of our, one former of our, customer and friend. Former customer, still friend. Still friend, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's not a former friend. We got to see him and uh, yeah, get some beer. We had some great beer. Nice yeah, Hellas and amazing really Hellas. good sour. Good kettle sour. Uh, we got to open up that Saison, that uh, Brett Aged Oh, God, Saison. yeah, That's maybe a bottle after that. the podcast. Maybe we should have done that during the we podcast. We should have done that. <laughs> maybe we, maybe we need to drink during the podcast. That's yeah, really well, next good podcast, idea. we'll be drunk. I promise. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. Um, so anyway, thanks for listening. If you made it all the way to the end of this thing, that's yeah. pretty awesome. I think that's about all we've got to say today. Uh, I mean, we could just sit here and talk for another hour, probably. But yeah, but that that you don't we'll want to be talking that. to nobody. Yeah, uh, I think so. we're already probably talking to nobody. Hi, mom. Love you. <laughs> Thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, thank you all for listening. And uh, we'll, we're probably gonna do this every other week. That's the plan. Yeah, every other week. Other week until uh, you know, until we just until people tell us that they want so much of it that we have to do one or a every lot less week, of it or a lot less of it. Yeah. So uh, feel free to give us advice in the comments. Only nice things, please. And uh, nice issue. You can, I mean, you can be critical, can be critical but just be but nice. Um, we work hard. And then uh, anything else, John? Emails? Oh, uh, questions. Questions, right. One thing we want to do moving forward here is have uh, answer any questions that people have about home brewing, about New York City beer, I guess. Um, about our products, got, anything. Anything you really think to ask us um, that's appropriate for podcasting with the explicit content rating. So uh, that's questions at bitterandesters.com. That's an email that I set up. So oh, you, you just set it up? I set that up yesterday. While we were talking? Yeah. Oh, yesterday. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, while we were talking, I was just, you know, here coding. <laughs> doing all that shit. Website, all that. Okay. Anyway, uh, I think that's it. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Outro music. Bada, 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 bada.
on down to Doug's Discount Emporium, where we got the lowest prices on all our homebrew supplies and equipment and anything else you might need. You need a donkey? We got you a donkey. I don't know what you want to do with it, but that's not my problem. Just get that donkey out of here. Just get that donkey Please. down. Get that. Down at Doug's Discount Homebrew <laughs> Emporium, 700 Washington Avenue, bitterinesters.com. Also known as Bitter and Esther's, there is no donkey.